people have jumped on here. Um, so good morning everybody, um, welcome to, this is our seventh part of pop-up chat and excitingly I'm actually doing this one back from the Pada office um, based here in Johnsonville in Wellington. Um, so it's really nice for us to be back at work again and nice to have the team in the office next door um, and great to sort of get us, get us all going back into the world again. Um, just some housekeeping as well that this session is being recorded and it will be made available on YouTube later on for you to share with um, colleagues. And also please note that your video image may be seen when we share the presentation on our website and social media. So please ensure that you have your camera turned off if you want to remain incognito. Um, also just keep yourself muted during the presentation as well. Um, down the bottom you will see the chat function. This is what you'll use to ask any questions. So if um, Justine is talking about something and you do want to ask a question at that time, just type your question in and I will interrupt and ask Justine the question. Um, otherwise, just save those for the end and then we can have a discussion at the end as well. Um, now, next week we have our talk uh, with Celine Donovan, who's from the Battered Women's Trust, um, supported with um, Inspector Chris Hurring from the police talking about supporting mothers during family violence. Um, so details of that one will be sent out along with the recording of this, which is next Wednesday, the 10th of June. Um, Justine, I'll hand you over just so you can do an introduction about yourself and um, then jump into your talk, if you don't mind. Okay, cool. <coughs> Hi, everybody. Um, so my name's Justine Pack England. I am a mental health nurse and currently I work for New Zealand Police as the uh, Police Welfare and Wellness Advisor. But previously I worked um, for Hawke's Bay DHB in the Maternal Mental Health Service. And although I don't work in maternal mental health, but there are a few um, pregnant and postnatal cops, um, I've still continued an interest uh, with finding things that support um, our mums. And I was really fortunate to come across um, some a postgraduate diploma in positive psychology, and it's the only one in Australasia. Um, and after I did that, or during the time of doing that, I was basically hooked on positive psychology and reflected a lot on how it can be used in lots of different circumstances. Um, Currently, I understand that positive psychology is used in um, not only health, but education and coaching, and yeah, so it can be used in all sorts. Um, so yeah, hopefully um, it might spark an interest in you, because the whole, whole thing around positive psychology is just to create a ripple and an interest in different people. Um, I'm not an expert, I'm learning. Um, I, I was just saying to Trina earlier that um, I've just finished a research study for a thesis that I'm completing and it's around use of positive psychology with um, mums with postnatal distress. Um, yeah, so the evidence around positive psychology is building all the time, which is really cool. Um, so... And please bear with me, this is the first pop-up chat that I've done like this. Lots of learning, which is really good. Okay, so flourishing. Um, so flourishing basically means that we've got a high well-being. Um, it's when we are experiencing positive emotions and positive psychology, psychological functioning most of the time. Um, and it just means having access to being able to have a pleasant and engaged um, or meaningful life. Um, so well-being. Well-being obviously means lots of different things to all of us, but uh, a lot of the studies have formulated specific things around what well-being is and um, the World Health Organization has, has suggested it is definitely more than um, the absence of illness um, and we do have a variation um, in well-being from languishing um, to flourishing which is what we want and uh, in terms of the literature there's um, the major concepts around it is feeling good and functioning well um, so there's lots of benefits to well-being, obviously, you know, socially, 
being able to um, have more positive interactions um, and be more productive. Um, I don't know if anybody has, has heard of, with the Mental Health Foundation, five ways to wellbeing. Um, within those five ways, there's uh, that connection with others, giving your time and your presence, taking notice, being mindful of things around you, um, keeping learning, um, which encourages new experiences, um, being active, um, which helps our physical as well as our mental health, and all of that, the um, specifically like with the five ways, but any any models and well-being, it um, helps to encourage our positive emotions, and engaging with different things, connecting relationships, developing our meaning and achievement. So in terms of the things that determine our well-being, so obviously like 50% of it is, um, is genetic and 10% is our circumstances, so where we are um, brought up, where, where we live. But a huge part, so that 40% is intentional activity. So they, that 40% that is what we have control over. So whether it's um, being able to shift our mindset, around certain things and being able to um, change how we view things. Um, so that is a significant part that, that um, we can work with. So what is positive psychology? So as in like with the with the slide, so traditionally psychology um, is based around like assessing particular things that that might not be going great. Um, it it uh, assesses the particular illnesses and focuses on psychological treatments. Whereas positive psychology is um, kind of flips it on the on the on the other side. It looks at all the things that are going right. So what's going what's going okay with you. Um, and a big part of positive psychology is use of character strengths. So the strengths within you that helps things go right in, in your world. Um, in a technical term, positive psychology is the scientific study of what makes life worth living. Um, and yeah, so since, since the, the, probably about the 1980s, there's been quite a significant shift um, and in, in terms of looking at, well, what is going okay for, for certain individuals and how can we build on that? So within the um, po positive psychology, uh, the different um, researchers, and there, there's a couple of specific people who have been quite paramount um, in, in the development of positive psychology, one of them being Martin Seligman. And so um, Martin Seligman and um, uh, I was trying to think, Chris Peterson, sorry, um, they developed this, uh, this table, I guess, and, and looked at what strengths that we could really, really focus on and use and um, identify if we are overusing, underusing. And, and they've, they've come up with this particular table. Since their development of this, though, there have been other different strengths models, but um, just to be able to show you just, just some of the things that um, are identified, like um, just in the recent circumstances with COVID, obviously, um, being able to identify the strengths just to be able to keep us going, like some people, have um, shown quite a lot of creativity, um, love of learning, uh, perspective. Some people like, you know, obviously those in government have shown quite a lot of significant leadership which has been needed. Um, and over the time there has, over these last few weeks, there's been lots that have been on social media, media around gratitude and um, and hope and yeah, so that's just to give you a little bit of an overview and that the big thing within those the, the character strengths is being able to identify them within yourself um, And then once you have identified them and just 
Yeah, mulling mulling over how when you when you are in a particular crisis situation, how can I tap into and use a particular strength to help get me through a particular um, significant situation? So when we use our strengths. Um, it helps us to um, achieve our goals faster, build our energy and our motivation, which ultimately helps with a now high level of well-being. So Martin Seligman, he um, he developed this this uh, PERMA model of well-being. So he he looked at the different things that were quite significant in being able to continue that whole process of well-being. And within his theory, as within the slides, um, there's the positive emotion, which is quite a, an essential part of our well-being. Um, it allows us to think flexibly, um, allows within that curiosity. Um, Positive engagement, so when we, we're engaged in things that we actually care about, that meet our values, we can experience flow, and I'll talk a little bit more about flow and the importance of that. So positive relationships, we all, we, as human beings, we need to connect with each other, and, um, and that really is quite significant with enhancing our well-being when we connect and, and have those, those significant relationships. Um, so positive meaning, so when we are at our best and feel engaged, we have higher positive emotions. When it's when something means something specific to us, it helps us um, with becoming our best self um, and engage in, in overall meaningful activities. And positive achievement. So when we reach our goals, we have again higher positive emotion and engagement and meaning. So a lot of this within this model, they they interact and help build um, that, that overall well-being. So I'll just sort of break it down a little bit. So within positive emotion, um, so there's, as within the slide, there's, you know, gratitude and forgiveness and humour, which obviously is another character strength. Savouring, savouring's definitely a, a big thing with developing that positive emotion. Um, when we savour a particular moment in time or activity and we're reminiscing, it can help lift how we're feeling, which again builds on those positive emotions. Um, and in terms of building on those positive emotions, one of the theorists, um, Barbara Fredrickson, she's got a, a model called broaden and build. So what her theory is around is the more that we experience those positive emotions and continue to build on that, when we reach a period of crisis in life for just using mums as, a, as an example, um, so when things are uh, extra challenging, when, when mums have built up that positive emotion, they can draw back on, on, those, um, on those emotions that, according to Fredrickson, that we bank um, for times of crisis. Um, and there's a whole theory around that, which I yeah, don't have time to go into, but just wanted to introduce it to you. Um, so... Positive engagement. Um, so I mentioned about flow just before. So when we're engaged in something that we're really interested in, it means a lot to us, it connects with our values, and we have uh, the right amount of knowledge and skills and, and opportunity to be able to do a task, whether it be work or home or wherever, um, then we can experience a, a, a period of, of what is called flow. So in a definition sense, flow is when time passes really quickly. Um, you have no real um, understanding that time has just gone so quickly. Um, and I know it's, it's sometimes it is really hard when we do an activity and we think, oh God, you know, I don't really want to do this and being able to understand why 
um, and being able to think when was the last time we did something and, and felt like significantly just that well situation and wow god I can't believe that it's it's lunchtime already where did that time go and when you reflect on that being able to understand that if you have that again that right knowledge and skills and opportunity then it helps with developing that um, that experience of flow, which is really cool. And again, that just continues building on those positive emotions. So relationships, like I mentioned earlier, um, yeah, as humans, we need each other. We need people to be able to connect. And, and obviously with, um, with these recent weeks, it's been quite challenging with being able to not have that face-to-face -face contact and touch um, and hug and, and that kind of thing. But as humans, we adapt. And, you know, like what we're doing right now with, with the Zoom, um, there's been significant adapting. But ultimately, we still need to have that, that human contact. Um, so being able to understand the importance of that and the importance of um, it connecting with our positive emotion is, is really important. And again, that's quite a significant uh, thing that is focused in on in terms of um, positive psychology. So meaning. Um, so being able to understand what gives us purpose. So the ikigai um, it is a, a Japanese saying, and it's basically um, what what is important for you, what what gets you out of bed, what is the driving force that is specific to you, what gives you meaning, and. And sometimes when you find um, that you're in a particular situation and it can be extra challenging, being able to think and reflect and think, okay, in this circumstance, what, what is it about this circumstance that will give me more meaning, a high level of meaning, so that I can then progress and actively do this, this task or, or activity or being able to um, be present in a situation. Um, and I think sometimes we, um, we, we don't give enough emphasis around being able to reflect on what gives us meaning until we are in term, term, uh, times of crisis, like the last few weeks. There's been quite a lot on social media of different people who have identified what gives them meaning. And, and it's quite neat just seeing that whole ripple um, and that building of that information that's out there. But, yeah, being able to understand what gives you, in particular, that meaning and purpose. So, uh, achievement. Um, the, the positive achievement is really important in that ongoing flourishing. So, being able to set and meet goals, um, in being able to feel energized and motivated. Um, and when you are trying to reach your goals, being able to, again, look at your strengths and, um, and savoring what is happening for you, being able to look again at, at meaning and what gives you that, that extra strength and positive emotion. Um, it can help you with different things that you choose to achieve. And, and ultimately, it can help just build that overall well-being. So I just put up just a few things, because the, the, the tricky thing about positive psychology is um, it's quite theoretical, but when you start to break it down and then being able to see, well, how can it be actually applied? Like it's all good and well, understanding all these different um, terms and, and that kind of thing, but how, how can it be used in the real world? Um, so like I've mentioned about with the character strengths or signature strengths, so being able to identify it and think, well, in a certain circumstance, if I know that um, that one of my strengths is curiosity and, and I'm getting bored, well, how can I really engage in something 
that feeds that curiosity and, and uses that natural character strength that I've got. And so when you, um, so I'm just thinking for myself, I do have a, a high, um, yeah, curiosity is definitely a big strength of mine. So I have a real love of learning. And so I know that if I'm starting to feel just a little bit flat, then using that particular strength helps to energize me and motivate me to be able to go and seek out something extra to learn, which then makes me feel really good. And then it just continues that whole process of, um, I might need to be connected with some other people to continue that learning and, and curiosity. Um, and seeking the meaning within what I'm, what I'm learning. So, yeah, just using that particular example um, and, and being able to understand what um, Seligman within his PUMA model, how it can be used specifically around with your character strengths. Um, three good things in life. So whether you um, are able to verbalise it or write it down, say in a journal, um, so being able to reflect and savour on three good things that, that may have happened. Um, and three good things that went well. Um, similar, similar sort of flavour. Um, and being able to just draw on that a little bit more. And it can, it can really help when we do reflect and savour and think back on that particular circumstance of how it made us feel. And then if we want to do it again, um, gratitude. So being able to do a specific gratitude visit, just cause. Um, writing a letter of gratitude um, and then delivering it. So, and it, and it can, be, can be anything. It doesn't have to be something that's really, really huge. It can be, um, you might've met someone and they had, just a, a little bit of an input on how you might have reflected about something. So just being able to show some gratitude for that person um, and that would make them feel good as well. Um, being able to identify when you're at your best and again being able to reflect on that of okay we, when, when was a circumstance where I felt that actually I was at my best self so so what was happening, how was I feeling, and how can I, what can I do to be able to continue that on again. Um, and it can be quite helpful if you are the type of person who does like journaling, when um, you can journal at the end of the day or the end of the week, and being able to think, well actually, when, when did I feel really um, in flow, or feeling that I'm using more of my strengths, um, just a few more, um, a few more tech. There's, there's heaps too, by the way. There's lots and lots of different interventions. Um, random um, acts of kindness. Um, so that in itself, you know, obviously it is really good when we feel that we have the opportunity or that we're in, engaged enough or energised enough to go and do something really good for someone else. Obviously, they feel really positive, um, that those positive emotions as well. But the random acts of kindness can have that, like I, I mentioned about that broaden and build before. So when we're doing actively random acts of kindness, it feels good. It's meaningful for us. We're connecting with other people. Um, we may have achieved something within that. Um, but that whole building of that emotions that when you do that random act of kindness, it kind of sits there for, for a wee while. Um, and if you've done something that is a random act of kindness, then you might go and tell someone about it. So as you're reminiscing about it, you're feeling those nice positive emotions again. So continuing to build on that can be really helpful. Um, like I mentioned before about uh, in times of stress, um, if you are feeling in, in a little bit of a crisis and feeling down on yourself, um, then you might be able to use that particular moment of thinking back of, wow, you know, when I did that particular situation, wow, that felt really good, and then being able to connect with that situation. Um, counting one's blessings. 
um, and yeah, using your talents or your signature strengths in a, in a particular creative or novel way. Um, and the three doors that close, three doors that open, that's, that's actually really um, a, a helpful thing, again, about reflecting when things, when some positive things have been happening. Um, I thought I'd just mention two, uh, mindfulness. Um, that is also really good for uh, the ongoing positive emotions, obviously being able to focus and being present in the moment. And not only are you, um, you uh, feeling that good sense of calm, but it helps with reflection as well if, when you do that further mindfulness meditation. But mindfulness, you can, you can do it anywhere. You don't have to be doing um, meditation. Um, I used to teach the mums that I supported to do mindful baking. Um, that can be a, a lot of fun um, and easy to teach the kids as well. So just being able to use all those senses and being present just by kneading some, you know, dough or whatever, being able to feel the texture, smell it, being engaged with that activity and being present in that particular moment. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so overall, like with um, positive psychology, like I, I understand that I've just given like a real basic, basic overview. Um, but the whole premise of it is to be able to utilize those strengths, being able to identify what things I can do to be able to boost up and engage and, and um, utilize that positive emotion and engaging with other people, other things, connecting with other people, finding meaning, being able to achieve certain things. Um, so obviously there's lots of different things that, that might help our well-being and ultimately helping us flourish. Um, but being able to, I guess, identify it and um, understand it a little bit more. When you are a mum and you've got 60 million things that are going on, you might be feeling quite depressed or anxious and being able to take a, a little bit of a moment and think, well, actually, I've got a gazillion loads of washing that's been, that's, that I've got to do. Um, the baby's crying. I'm, I'm just absolutely exhausted. I feel like I'm a crap mother. Um, when all of those thoughts that are going on, being able to think, well, actually, yesterday things were a little bit, a little bit different, a little bit slightly better. What was going on for me at that time? What was I? What kind of strengths was I using to be able to get through yesterday? And and how how was I connecting with other people? Um, so yeah, that's just in a real brief um, overview how it can be really helpful for for anybody, but in particular for mums who are experiencing a, a real significant time, whether it's um, distress or um, feeling depressed or anxious. Um, so I've so there's all sorts of information around positive psychology. It's just kind of gone boom. Um, which is kind of cool, but I've just put up just a couple of um, websites, um, positivepsychology.com, they've got a, a huge amount of information that is, uh, it, it's coordinated in such a way within their website that if you want to target something in particular, if you just want to learn about mindfulness or um, positive psychology in schools or in in, in a workplace. Um, yeah, you can you can zoom in on there, and they've got a connection. Um, like I've got there just around some really cool TED talks, um, but Martin Seligman does some really cool um, TED talks as well. And with that um, VIA character. Dot org. That's a free site that uh, you can just go on and um, can't remember offhand how many questions there are, but it is a really good way just to be able to answer a few questions and see what type of strengths that do pop up um, if you are interested in that. Um, 
and it can be yeah it, it can be quite interesting when you see if you think that what you know what your strengths are and then being able to identify some questions and say well actually there's you know I, I wasn't aware that that humor is a strength of mine or or something else is a strength so it's a good place to start anyway and the langleygroup.com.au that is the um the group where I did my positive psychology training with, um, and it's the only training in Australasia. Um, and the cool thing too is that Langley have developed a lot of extra things that they offer, um, including different um, online trainings as well. Um, and they've got like emotional intelligence, um, yeah, positive psychology, um, yeah all sorts of different things so I just thought I'd mention that and just a few books um, by Martin Seligman um, that Flourish book is is really good um, and the Learned Optimism as well and like for mums I find being able to have that conversation around learned helplessness and being able to try and uh, figure out different ways of, of getting through that, that learned helplessness where sometimes we just think, oh, you know, nothing nothing is going to get any better. And you start to behave in a particular way that um, you're not engaging and you're not doing things to be able to help lift those positive emotions and you get a bit stuck. Um, so, yeah, any, any one of these books can be helpful. Um, and again just some other ones mindset is another really really good book and interestingly um for within police there's been a significant shift in uh being able to understand about how mindset can affect what you do and um so i know i've seen it um firsthand how um, that book in particular is being used currently for police and for other organisations for just understanding how we can shift, how we're thinking about particular things. And again, with um, Flow, um, if, if that particular, um, that, that whole understanding about Flow is of interest, um, yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Justine. We've got one question that's come in from Vicky. Yep. She says, what would be an easy way to introduce this to mums so they can start using it without a great amount of energy on their behalf? Yeah. I guess maybe asking that question, what strengths do you do you think that you have? Having having that first question. Um, and it's a it's a bit of an unusual question because it's not something that often um, mums are asked like I know as a clinician when I worked in maternal mental health it would always be you know how is your mood and focusing on those um, negative aspects of mood rather than I don't think I, I would have ever started off a, a question of what strengths have you got and and I think by being able to ask a mum that would start that conversation and open that door of maybe them thinking, okay, well, I'm talking about, you know, the things that I think that I'm good at or the things that um, I have used. And by building on that, that, that questioning um, can maybe start to open that further conversation of how they can have input in being able to how to, to shift how things are for them. Yeah. Does that help you further? You can unmute yourself if you do want to ask anything else to Justine to continue the conversation. And that was great, thank you. Great, you're welcome. All right, now if anyone else has got any questions, um, now's the time to do that. Um, if anyone's got anything to jump on here. Would you say that um, positive psychology is similar to solution-focused therapy? There is a an element of that solution-focused type flavour within positive yeah. psychology. Mm. Um, I, I definitely um, use solution-focused therapy. 
um, at work and it can be really quite helpful. Um, I guess it is very, very similar, but with positive psychology, there's a lot more components. So they're, they're, I'd say that solution-focused therapy is an element of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Thank much you. the same as like motivational interviewing and that kind of thing as well. Yeah, they all overlap somehow, don't they? Yeah, it's all strengths-based. Mm. Yeah. There's another question that's come through. Do we have any free websites that we can offer to mothers? And there's also just a follow-up um, from Erin at Perinatal Wellbeing in Christchurch that says Christy Zimmer has some good free printable resources to help mums get started. So just send if you know of any other free websites that um, mums can jump into as well. I'd say that's oh, yeah. psychology.com. Yeah, it's it's got... Uh, it, the, the good thing about that site that I've found is that it has just those selected articles that you can have a little bit of a, a read of. Um, and yeah, j- just... It's not that it provides all of the answers, but... Um, if you are interested enough in particular things within like whether it's helping to build your emotions so there's a whole article that talks about broaden and build Um, being able to understand more about meaning and how that can help you as well again there's lots of different articles I mean if anything really the, the, the TED talks would probably be helpful as well um, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know of anything that is specific for mums, um, which is why I chose to do my research around that to try and start to build that knowledge. Like, there's lots of stuff around positive psychology that's quite general, um, and even the um, the owner of the Langley Institute. I when I was starting my research and I asked her, you know, oh, has there been other studies? And um, and she said, no, not not particularly, not around. Like I looked at postnatal distress. Um, yeah. So I suppose it maybe being able to ask mums in particular, is there something? Um, that they are wanting to draw on a little bit more, like learn a little bit more, whether it be around like happiness um, or shifting how they are thinking about something, being able to understand why am I why am I quite pessimistic about something? You know what what's going on about there? Because that whole cognitive restructuring um, and the positive psychology also uses the the stuff within CBT as well but it's around that mindset. Um, So if somebody is struggling with that kind of thing, I would totally recommend that mindset book. Again, it's not mum focused, but um, I think it would be quite quite beneficial. Great. Um, Erin's just attached a a download there as well, about 10 minutes to recognise the good stuff. Nice. So probably quite useful um, if people want to download that now. Um, I will attach that with the recording to just boxes there that mums can fill in um, just to sort of start thinking about those positive, those things that they like, that they adore. Yep. So thanks, Erin. Appreciate that. Yep. It's all building on that positive emotion got to start from somewhere so that's a good point you know good good place to start great well it looks like we are getting close to the end if anyone's got any other questions feel free to unmute and um, we've just got a couple more minutes before we sign off if anybody mm-hmm. is interested in wanting to learn a bit a bit more then i'm i'm happy um trina for you to pass on my email address and and contacts and um yeah like like i'd said earlier positive psychology there's just lots and lots of things that are involved in it and being able to do like a real snippet um an expert might be able to do it (laughs) but um yeah i've just just tried just to do that whole introduction um just to spark if there's any interest in it something something different i guess for um, to be able to learn about and have a conversation with mums in particular um, because it, yeah, a lot of the stuff and coming from 
working in, in a maternal mental health service, it is quite illness focused and um, that strengths based stuff is, is um, really, um, oh, I'm thinking a lot more sustainable. Mm. That's excellent. Thank you. We look forward to reading your thesis when it's published. Cool. <laughs> Right. Well, thanks, Justine. You know, it's great having you um, involved and um, still with all the, the work that we're doing with Pada, Justine's a, a huge advocate for our work and great to have um, people in this capacity still there um, supporting what we do. And um, now the slides, Justine's happy to make those available. So if I could just get you to email those through to me as well, and then we can attach those um, with a copy of the recording, which will be available later on today. So thanks everyone, appreciate your time today and we look forward to tuning in for next week's chat. Great, go well, thank you. See ya. Yeah.